This is a headline from The Guardian, 28th of February, 2022. England and Wales police bosses will not admit to institutional racism in their forces. Why should they admit to something that doesn't exist? The article is by veteran crime correspondent Vikram Dodd. Chief constables began considering a public admission in December and have held a series of private meetings among forces to try to find agreement, but they've had no such agreement. Experts in racing and police warn a failure to admit institutional racism will damage already weak confidence in policing among black communities. Experts in racing and police. What does that mean? Horse racing? The article goes on to claim that policing was first labelled as institutionally racist in the 1999 McPherson report on, on failings that let the racist killers of the black student Stephen Lawrence escape justice for so long. Uh, no, so-called institutional racism originated in the United States. Now. As you had prior to the so-called Civil Rights Act and uh, the earlier Brown versus Topeka, as you had legal segregation, whether or not it was separate but equal, you could argue that there was such a thing as institutional racism. There was certainly institutional racial discrimination, but that's never been the case in Britain. I mean, there have been informal stuff, colour bars in clubs and stuff. Sorry about the creaking table. <laughs> Colour bars in, in clubs and stuff. But um, Stephen Lawrence was murdered in April 1993 um, by one member of a five-strong, or perhaps a six-strong gang who was waiting for a bus in Eltham with his friend Dwayne Brooks. Uh, one of them used the dreaded N-word and he was stabbed. And on that basis, on that basis alone, this was called racist. When the police failed to obtain a conviction, um, the, the, the Lawrence family who turned on them, they were surrounded by all sorts of hustlers to whom they gave the cold shoulder. But eventually you had the, the McPherson report uh, and it was complete rubbish. It, it, it was set out to investigate the death of Stephen Lawrence. He made all sorts of absurd and uh, outrageous and at times dangerous recommendations. But if you read this article, it's it's basically arguing statistics. Statistics, more statistics, and even more statistics. Here's a, an example. A series of continuing crises of race and official statistics showing black people are more likely to face coercive powers such as force and stop and search led police chiefs to vow change. This is garbage. The, the reality is that the vast majority of violent crime, violent with a capital V, is committed by males between the ages of about 15 and 45. And blacks in Britain and elsewhere are far more involved in violent crime with a capital V than, than non-blacks. This is the reality. It, it doesn't do with so-called racism. This montage is from the Evening Standard in November 2021. Some of the teenagers killed in London so far. Look at the faces. Look at them. That's teenagers. Boys. Uh, uh, I don't think there's a girl amongst them, no, but I mean, there, there, there have been girls killed, but boys stabbed to death. For what? Now, if you want to put a stop to this, who are you going to police? Who, who, are, you going to, who are you going to stop in the street? 60 year old white women? Blind men? Disabled Chinamen? I mean, it's ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous.